Welcome everybody. This is the Community and Economic Development Committee. I'm John. Oh, we will call. Yeah. 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 Good. Um, so we're going to go around the room and say we got Chris. Uh, sorry, Chris Schutte, Economic Community Development. Oh, Dean, I'm sorry. Dean, Dean, Mandy Honest, Quick's Office. Ryan Yale, Planning Department. We just get names because we're without order. Dave Robertson, Gina Ashley, Sun, and Anita Burke, the hot box, international. Janine Nesheim, Anchorage Health Department. Darcy Harris, Anchorage Health Department. Jake Warden, Kanabaska. Maureen Gebhardt, Momo's Baby. Sonola, Alaska Fire Wing. Will Schneider, Catalyst Cannabis Company. Hey, James Thornton, uh, Anchorage uh, Licensee. Mark Butler, North Star Community Council. Heather Romo, American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. So, um, for people who haven't been in the meeting, this will be largely a discussion amongst assembly members and staff. And at some points, it's a big topic. We've got a lot to go through today. Um, and broadly, though, if you have something to add, you can raise your hand, but wait till I identify you. And because we're recording, um, state your name before you speak, just so um, someone listening later wants to follow this knows who you've spoken. And I think even amongst this table, we should be somewhat careful about that. Um, this is a very early stage. I know um, on-site consumption has got a lot of issues with it. This is very, very early. So we're preparing a document that will go through much more procedure, probably through this committee at least once more, and then ultimately to the assembly where we'll have a public hearing and lots of time for input. So we don't set the policy here. That's only done at the regular Tuesday assembly meeting. So it, um, you know, this is a good time to get input and see which way we might start, but this isn't at all anything coming out of this committee as a final product. Um, so anyway, just to let people know. Um, so starting out, um, uh, basically we just have on here on-site consumption. We've got three pieces. One is the changes to Title 10, which Dean has mostly worked on, and Title 21. Uh, sorry. Mr. Chairman, actually, <clears throat> we've got, uh, there was a little bit of uh, communication error between uh, Assembly Council and staff, so there's actually two drafts of Title 10 in front of you. So for people that are following along, there's a beautiful colored version that has red, blue, etc. This is the Title 10 edits that were completed by um, the municipal attorney's office, uh, planning staff, uh, clerk's office, and myself. Then there's also another stack of paper dealing with Title 10 that's only in black and white. Um, and that's the draft that Dean delivered this morning that Dean had been working on. And we're concerned that there might be, we might have missed some of each other's edits uh, because of all of us were working off of your draft, off of the color draft. Um, so, if Dean's okay with it, what I'd like to recommend is that we set Dean's on the side for now and that we go back to the full color version of it, which is what we discussed last week and what the changes uh, were made to based on that discussion. But where appropriate, if there are changes that Dean identified in his Title 10 draft that we find, uh, that we incorporate them into this um, discussion draft. Is that okay? <coughs> Uh, yeah, that's so fine. I hope that we would have time in the next few years to go through some things in mind that are part of the computer technique. I think we should, of course. So we'll start with the color. Start with the, the color here, but then come back. Yes. Do you want to come back or go page by page? Because the black and white one has notes in the margin. Go through all the first. So go through all of the color version first, then come back to the black and white okay. one. That'd be fine. And then. 
because we love killing trees here. There's another large stack of paper that I actually don't have that are Title 21 changes as well. <coughs> I think we have that. Okay, good. That's right. Good, good. Okay. I don't Do we have enough for everyone who's here? Yeah. <laughs> people, have, people have Title 21 as well? No. No. Okay. We'll get more copies printed of the Title 21. Okay, we'll be working our way towards that. So. And then we have um, Assemblyman Constant had brought in some information. I think it's worthwhile regarding um, uh, uh, smokeless cannabis delivery. And I wanted to let him start introduce this information because it'll um, be part of our discussion as we go through the other things. Yeah, so let's go ahead. Uh, somebody please. handed out a flyer that says cross reference law in the draft AO for on site consumption. Who did that? Dean, I think. Dean, was this you? Um, yeah, that's my handout. Okay. And basically, there's some law referenced in the, uh, the state regulations that were adopted, mostly the definitions section, but we're adding 10, 80, 9, 90. And I um, see those definitions just before the state law, so I copy the state law that refers to some of the traffic sections happening in those terms. And the, right. Rather than just to say this term means what this is in AS. So, uh, 1665005 is Muni code, right? That's Muni code, and I include that because the term smoking in uh, the draft I wrote, and smoking is a defined term. And uh, we're not modifying that section, the definition section 1665, second hand smoke ordinance, but I've included it here so we understand what terms I'm using if they need. Right. Um, for example, smoking is uh, it includes the definition of um, light tobacco and marijuana product. So, uh, light, right? Yes. Okay, so I have presented to the membership, and there are some extra copies, but probably not enough to go around, the definition of the lighting mm -hmm. of smoking as lighted from the municipal code, and then also a scientific study that was done in UCSF about the vaporization of smoke as a smokeless cannabis delivery system, a pilot study from the municipal point of order. So, you, you have this, yes. with this definition. This definition does not include marijuana products. Yes. Right. It's and, and so the one that the planning um, department you, handed me. Excuse me. Yep. This one you handed out, it's it used to an old at the bottom. Right. It's old code. Right. It's just, and it's, it's just what signatures. I could find on the website. So yeah. what is the current definition? <laughs> the current definition is in my handout. It's black and white. And it says, um, there you go. You will note that the history of the very last of iron has A215-65. Right, smoking and then 1669, inhaling, not exhaling, that the <laughs> burning and, um, or carrying any light tobacco or marijuana. Okay. Sorry. okay, smoking means inhaling, exhaling, burning or carrying any lighted tobacco or marijuana product. Right, that's the current case. Right, so lighted is the burden. And so I am presenting to the membership a study from UC San Francisco in 2007 that states that the, um, the vaporization of flour is a smokeless delivery system and that we should contemplate that as uh, we contemplate the definition of inhalation. And so I would suggest and recommend as we go forward, anywhere where it talks about smoke systems or by smoking, we also add vaping of flour or come up with the vaporization of flour because that is a method of inhalation that I believe meets the standard required to allow on-site consumption if we approve that despite the smoking prohibition. So question for Dean then, is um, vaping covered by our smoke-free ordinance? Oh <coughs> uh, yes. How so? Um, <coughs> so, in um, the definitions in my red definitions handout, electronic smoking device is the definition of the second term. It means an electronic battery operating device that will deliver tobacco, nicotine, and marijuana dangers for inhalation. I think that covers smoking devices. So, can we amend that section? Um, Yes, in my draft, I have amendments to some sections in 1665 to address the secondhand smoke issue. 
I do not have amendments to the definitions of Kira. Thank you. After all, we need to do. Thank you. Well, I have a question on this. So, electronic smoking is defined, and then smoking is defined, and smoking uses the phrase lighted tobacco or marijuana. So, if you have an electronic device, is that lighted? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, well, I'll answer that, and then I just have a, a follow-up comment on sort of the process. Um, that's that's an interesting debate. I mean, to vaporize product, it does have to be heated to a certain temperature in order for it to release the whatever you're trying to release. Um, is that lighting? Um, that's a debate that I think you guys should have at some point. Um, however, uh, the prospect, my process point, um, when we left the meeting last week, uh, we were directed to focus on code provisions that would allow <coughs> edibles to occur sooner than smoking. And uh, so we I understand Dean has addressed some Title 16 changes in his draft. We have not seen them, nor did we approach it in that manner. We wanted to get something in front of you that sets up the framework for getting edible consumption on site out the door um, with the understanding that you wanted to deal with smoking separately. So what I'd, what I'd like to suggest is that we put smoking-related items aside momentarily, finish up where we were with edibles to see if we're on the right track according to this body, and then if so, we can move forward from there and talk about and work on smoking. Okay, I had a different notion, but that's probably fine if that's where we are. Um, Chris? I just would offer that whenever we're going through an item that references smoking, I would like us to add language that specifically talks about the vaporization, the non-combustible vaporization. So just as a matter of process, so we have that going forward. We, we had started out, uh, and even our agenda said last time, edible, but then what we got with the Title 10 changes dealt with everything. And my understanding at the end of last meeting was saying, well, let's go ahead and put everything in there, but have some quick mechanism where we can pull out smoking, but, but that's fine. Which is, which is what we've done. Okay. So, in essence, what we delivered to you today is edible only conception. Okay. <coughs> so, do you want to start with Title 10 or Title 21? Title, oh, go ahead, Dean. Um, in my draft, I did separate out edibles and um, spooky types of uses. So, <coughs> they're separate out of mine, they were separated out of Mr. Shoes. I guess that maybe I just went through here in terms of addressing the smoking part. But when we can get to that at the end, I guess, after we don't want to be Mr. Shoes So do you want to go through titles? I was saying 10 first and then 21. Yes, if we could. Okay. okay. Um, there's relatively few changes from the draft last week. We, we did uh, spend time looking at um, what would be the best approach, given the, the direction of the body, to focus on edible consumption first. Um, as Mr. Gates uh, has told us, he, he completely extricated um, edibles from any sort of smoking um, provisions of Title 10. Uh, in our work on it, uh, we found a way to largely leave the provisions of Title 10 <laughs> intact, but through uh, select tweaks, uh, make it uh, so that it can only <coughs> be implemented for edible on-site consumption, and we'll walk through that if you want. And if no, where Ryan is, but we can get started, I guess. Just before you get down to the discussion of vaporization. Can you say your name because we're recording? Oh, sir. Marge, Sunkey American Lung Association. The city code on, on smoke free is not up to date. There's a state law that supersedes. There was a handout at the last meeting that pointed that out. And electronic smoking products and vapor products are included in the state. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think whether the state law supersede or makes this debatable, the preemption language in that state statute, it's worded a little awkwardly, but it would seem to sort of grandfather in ordinances that were passed, second line some ordinances passed through that state law. But if an ordinance pallet were going to adopt certain hands of ordinance after that state law was adopted, then um, we have to comply with the state law. Okay so, so our, okay, so Anchorage's smoke-free law came before the state smoke-free law, so ours may not be preempted. Yes. Okay. That's my view. All right, thanks. I said it's debatable. 
Okay. Um, so do you want to start theme then as go through the Title X changes? Or or we, well, I, or I'll Chris? start. You Ours are short. Time. Yes. We both did Title X. Our Title X, the difference between the two drafts, our Title X is largely unchanged from last week, minus a couple of strategic tweaks that help <coughs> eliminate smoking. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, on page one, um, uh, just real quick, there was a comment from you, Mr. Weddleson, about uh, why we're following these supplemental standards. Um, it's our recommendation to leave it as is, as I understand it, and Mandy can chime in. Uh, that terminology is used primarily because municipal standards are supplemental to the state standards. Um, but I understand that you uh, may not like that word. We're fine. We'd like to leave it minus that weird hyphen that's in there in code. I don't know how that got in there. Um, and then moving down, you'd asked us to delete <coughs> the uh, uh, words in red, the State Alcohol Marijuana Control Office. Um, we recommend not. That's lifted verbatim from the state regs. And at such a time when the state chooses to rebrand, as you put it, we'll, we'll deal with it then. Page two. <coughs> um, you had been... Uh, you'd ask questions about the why, uh, that whether or not we're talking about the director of planning or the director of AMCO. We edited line one to make it clear that this is a reference to the director of AMCO. Um, and again, this, fall, this flows directly from the state regulations. It is up to the director of AMCO to deem applications complete. Jumping down into uh, 18, or sorry, 1080-021, this would be lines 16 through 25. Uh, this section deals with the requirements for new applications, uh, and we suggested, bless you, some edits that will uh, make this provision apply both to brand new retail um, license applications or uh, on-site consumption endorsement applications. And in essence, what we're doing is we're codifying what is the current practice, which is new marijuana uh, license applications go to the planning department. In code, currently, they, it says that they go to the clerk's office. As a matter of practice and policy over the past several years, um, the, the clerk's office has entered into an MOU with the planning department to receive and process these first. <coughs> um, we're just updating code to reflect that. So now uh, 1080021 will include both uh, new applications as well as on-site consumption endorsements. Andy, did I miss anything? No, that's it. Okay. The one thing that we did not change, and you did have a question about it, is um, should this form necessarily be prescribed by the clerk versus the planning director? I think our, our take is this is in Title 10, so it is the purview of the municipal clerk. Uh, we're fine with leaving it there. It doesn't really matter if she prescribes the form or we do. It's going to be a collaborative effort, uh, but we'll leave that part up to you. Um, do, 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 do. Page three, uh, there's just a number of um, edits to specify the director. Um, in each line where it references either the municipality or used to reference the municipal clerk. Um, Ryan, are these your edits? Those are mine, Those so are that's similar to um, changing it to the director. And this is for the planning department, so we can add that clarification um, if you'd like. It mentions the planning department at the head of that section, but um, if you'd like it clarified in each part, we can do that. I think it might be clear because we have director of AMCO, and then you switch to director of planning. Just make it crystal clear. Okay, we can make that change. I'll do that right now. Um, it may be also in the first reference to the municipal director of the word municipal, so that it's really clear. Yeah. Can do. Okay. Moving on. Page, let's see. Um, eight, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Page nine, please. Um, beginning with lines 14 and 15, uh, you would you would ask uh, us to not just delete, but to add that specific uh, add specific reference to on-site consumption endorsements, which we did. <coughs> the change. Um, do, 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 moving down to line 30, lines 34 and 35, we put in the specific references to Title 21. 
um, that were missing before. It was a blank spot. And then lines 39 and 40, this is kind of the crux of our argument about uh, how we're fixing this to be only for edibles. We've just simply removed the ability for an on-site endorsement to include um, selling for consumption marijuana bud or flour, period. So that's no longer an option. <coughs> and in looking at the ordinance and looking at the proposed Title 10 revisions, it seemed like this was the cleanest and easiest way to um, largely maintain the um, Title 10 changes that now conform with the updated state regulations, but also simply just preclude any sort of on-site consumption of bud or flour. Therefore, it would leave only edible marijuana products or food or beverages not containing marijuana or alcohol. Address this for a because um, my understanding at the last meeting, I think it was unclear, particularly because the agenda said edibles, you know, was that we said, okay, well, let's write something up that has both, but make it easy for us at the assembly level to say, let's pull, uh, okay, we're not willing to go with and beyond edibles for now, so we would pull out the smoking and just have a simple, someone could have an amendment at that point. Um, instead of, at this point, if we went forward with this, we a separate discussion later, perhaps, about smoking. What's this sound? Uh, maybe I should let Stephen speak to this. My, my, my thing was the opposite, that, that we were going to have an ordinance that went forward with just edibles. Because if we do the way you describe, um, we're going to have a lot of folks um, uncertain of whether or not uh, flower bud smoking on site will, will be part of it, because they don't know whether the amendment will pass or not. If we go forward with just this, then um, it's far less likely that that portion of the debate will uh, will occur. Okay, Felix. Yeah, ditto, Forrest. Um, I agree that um, we need to be clear with the policy recommendations we're making to the full body and clear uh, to the public at large of what we're saying. And uh, I think this makes it very clear what we're trying to do. And I think we can state on the record our intent to have this discussion uh, at a future time. And I know Mr. Constant wanted to have sort of parallel discussions, and I know he's probably going to speak to that. But I think this sets clear what we want to do for now. Chris, hey, I, Mr. Mr. Rivera clearly captured the, the perspective that I walked away with that we should be working on these issues in parallel. They don't have to be in sequence. Uh, the, the intent behind separating it, the issues was that there could be some expedition to get it to this season, this summer. But the fact is, even the on-site consumption rules, because of their Title 21 implications for edibles, are going to have to go to the planning zoning. <coughs> and there is no expeditious way to do this. And so um, we have a process, and we have to follow the process. And so um, with that in mind, then I personally believe we ought to be working in parallel. So, so leave that in here. So <laughs> I, I, it's fine to separate them into four documents, two that would deal with Title 16 and Title 21, or Title 10 and Title 21, for edibles and <coughs> another set that would work for the the inhalation. And I think that's fair. Keep them separate, but not be delaying the game on either account. Of course. Did we actually conclude last meeting that it was impossible for the edible only portion to um, avoid going through the planning and zoning? planning and selling process. I thought that, <coughs> that was an open question. I and mean, if we went with edible only, it might be that one ordinance could could go through the assembly process and not have to go to planning and zoning. The planning and zoning commission. So I guess go ahead, Chris. Oh, uh, Dean was first. Um, I, I want to mention that uh, in the past, the assembly has from time to time passed an ordinance, the um, section that says we waive planning and zoning commission review for this ordinance. You know, we've seen that. You know, we've seen that. It's possible to that here. If that's the you old know, policy decision that we want to do. Um, I understood also from the discussion that summer season was important. So I kind of took that approach in my ordinance and my draft. Um, I separated edibles from smoking, but I have them here going at the same time and putting the ordinance out of it. And I guess that's the policy choice, though, if you want to separate out smoking and hold for later. I mean, it might be, I guess, um, it, it, 
Maybe it would be good to see the social media staff come around the side, the side at least when looking at uh, the first parts of 10 and 306 and uh, the donation of that in 4 and 10 and 5. So on mine is at page 7, um, that black and white version. So the social media power run is uh, 9. So it, if um, We intend for the Planning Zoning Commission to review our uh, their timeline and basically the uh, Planning Zoning Commission needs 21 days public notice before they have their hearing and then uh, they have 60 days to make a recommendation to the Assembly. Uh, they also have some submittal deadlines. Um, I pointed out what they are. So it seems to me the earliest that we could probably get a uh, Planning Zoning Commission uh, review that one for me is, is um, I think, uh, like the last June, first July, something like that. And just as a follow up to that, um, uh, to the points earlier about we want to uh, proceed as quickly as possible with edibles was exactly the direction that we followed in preparing this ordinance. The concern about getting to having to go through planning and zoning review of Title 21 amendments. That stands no matter what. That I mean, that just needs to be accepted. That because there are Title Twenty One implications in the on-site consumption space, room, whatever it's called, uh, that that's kind of a non-starter issue. However, as Dean pointed out, should the assembly deem it uh, worthy of bypassing planning and zoning and just making the Title Twenty One changes concurrently? then that issue goes away, which I think was the uh, approach that we anticipated you would take. The Title 21 changes, and you'll see this when we get to it, are actually relatively minor, and I think it is justifiable for the Assembly to take this course of action. Um, but the two do need to happen because the two are intertwined. Sure. Okay. Just, to, just to reiterate, <coughs> if, we, um, if we choose to not um, bypass uh, planning and the Planning Zoning Commission, then that obviates, to me at least, it probably obviates the need for a separate uh, edible-only ordinance. I, I might on that, let me discover. So you're saying because it takes so long, you might as well put them together. Right. I mean, the, if the justification for the edible-only ordinance is that there's a summer tourist season and tourists have no place to legally consume, um, then the fact that you know, all of this needs to go to planning zoning, even if, as Chris said, the, the, the Title 21 implications for, especially for edible only, we don't have to put infiltration or anything like that, are pretty minor. But if we're still sending to planning and zoning, given their very long timeline, comparatively long timeline, um, then we might as well do them together. Okay. Uh, and once we, as we go through the Title 21, maybe we'll kind of then keep that in the back of our yeah. minds. Is this planning and zoning commission worthy? Chris? I think there are merits to working them on separate tracks in either case just because it's super clear for people and we can contemplate them independently and then there can be opportunities for amendment that won't impact either or <coughs> the other and then when they land hopefully they'll be in separate subsections of the code in such a way that it's very easy to manage going forward so I think there are merit to approaching the question separately even if it is decided by this group that, or not this group, six members of the body to bypass planning and zoning. Uh, I agree, let's wait and hear about what the scope and scale of changes are to the Title 21 question to know if it's something that really needs to be. Okay. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, I mean, the, the, I, we keep hearing reference to doing things separately. In essence, that's what this is, because you, this is, does not allow on-site uh, smoking consumption. So uh, this technically is the separate vehicle. Now, Dean went a step further and just completely drafted, apparently just completely drafted a um, Title 10 revision that only speaks to edibles. There are components of this one that apply to both. There's components of the state regulations that apply to both. To, no, to, to our draft of Title 10. Um, so I think that the, the outcome of this, should this be the path that we choose, is a draft of Title 10 changes that precludes any sort of smoking whatsoever, pushing that debate to a later date. Title 21 changes that have to go at the same time to address the on-site consumption space, which uh, state regulations are fairly agnostic, agnostic to whether or not it's edible or smoking. 
Um, the assembly can then make the decision of whether or not that needs to go through planning and zoning. We would argue probably not. Uh, and then move forward from there. That at least gets this, potentially gets this on the books in um, time for summer season. For those entities interested in on-site edible consumption, they could be up and running. Meanwhile, the community can continue the larger debate on on-site smoking consumption. Okay, and that's, that's kind of where we started out. And then we kind of, kind of more did it ourselves. Uh, just to clarify things, so the ventilation is required even if it's just edibles, and it's required because the state says that, right? Uh, through the chair, we don't necessarily think so. There are a number of provisions in the state regulations where it says if applicable, so I think that the state regulations, while not 100% clear, do envision the ability of a consumption space to not require ventilation if there's no smoking. Now the other provisions uh, are very clear that they have to occur. Is that your read to me? I agree in my draft. I did the same. Ventilations only require when there's areas for smoking or smoking to that by the enforcement. So I think we're consistent in that yeah. regard. Like, for it, it's a bit different. And we're going to get to that on page okay. 11 if we keep going. Okay, so I misunderstood that. That's important. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I, I, I think that uh, uh, the edibles are a little less controversial than, than the smoking endorsement. And, uh, and so uh, I, I think it certainly would be possible for us to uh, bypass a hearing with the planning zoning commission. Okay, so practical question then. We're on page nine of the sure. colored version. I'm calling it A. Okay. So the so just reading this you delete self for consumption on the premises. So A goes away completely and you would read letter B and C and so on. Actually the way we've drafted it, Mr. Chairman, is we've just oh, put reserved. Okay, so that says it's reserved. Edible. So we're still in nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're still in nine. Okay. Is near the bottom of the so that allows when and if smoking is a, something to be added back in, we could just add that back in. So you could go there for possible smoking that's not now allowed to make it crystal clear. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know there will be people reading this coming in it, within the industry. I assume. Oh, on-site consumption immediately it pops in. Oh, we can smoke, and then you go through and go, whoa, whoa, whoa! You have to back your head up that it's edibles. I'm looking at Chris Usher. Is that is that kind of where the thought process would go, or? I mean, anybody that's been paying attention. To that's this, Janet Welton. Yeah, Janet Welton. Uh, anybody that's been paying attention is not going to knows that there's clear rules set out that we need to follow strictly. And knows that there's a local approval process. So maybe maybe a consumer <coughs> might might think that, but I think proper education and signage, which our retail owners are really good at, it won't be a problem. Okay. It's going to go in and just light up without. Looking around and seeing no combustible smoking marijuana only edibles. And plus, you're only going to sell the edibles in that side of the shop because you can only sell what you can, what, what's for on site consumption in that side. You have a whole different point of set, like sales system. So I don't see how that would actually happen uh, unless they worked out their own product and then they would be escorted off the premises. All right, thanks, Chris. So, Mr. Chairman, how does this sound to you? Reserved for on site consumption of marijuana bud or flower by smoking? We'll pencil that in. Let's see, because that might reserve for. Uh, it's clear to me. I'm gonna the public would test it. Public might think extrapolate. You know, this is coming. Then. Yeah, I, I would. I would prefer um, the method to just do that. I've just put just leave reserve. Reserve. Just leave reserve. reserve. Let's leave it reserved. Okay. Okay. And most of this speaks to the industry. I mean, the average person doesn't know code. They do. I. You're, you're, you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> more so, it would be for your advocates against any of this use. They're the ones who are going to use that as a tool. And so, however the language is. So, just leave it. Okay. Um, okay, good. So, Dean? I know that we said we could do all of the Mr. Shippies color draft first, but um, now I have second thoughts and maybe could get what I did. <laughs> 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 Because this is we really, of, really, I guess, the different approaches we have. So if you look at my black and white. So do you want to go side by side? Could we do that? <coughs> Which page? Yeah, um, at least for this part. Do you want to go So back um, my draft um, corresponded to that division of QA. So I've got my draft, it's on page 8, line 17. So 
And actually, if you could look instead at page seven, and that your mind's got Excuse me. Um, I don't think any of us have the this black and white copy that you can get your Um, there might not be enough. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'
for someone who's already granted that endorsement, even though it's annual, if the Title 21 rules are different for this building because they have this other alternative method, it would probably be wise to have a second process that would ensure the inspections are done properly and they're in compliance with the new set of rules. And so I don't know what mechanism would be built in if we went, because I appreciate the elegance of your solution. Don't have to go back for a second application, which we all appreciate less bureaucracy, but how do we capture the change? Uh, good question. So through the chair, <coughs> uh, in a world where an uh, applicant or a licensee starts with an endorsement for edibles only, at some point the law changes and smoking now becomes an option. I think what we envisioned is because there are such strict requirements required for a smoking uh, consumption area, that that alone is the trigger, that they, they will not be allowed to sell for smoking until such time as they upgrade their, their ventilation and other requirements in the regulations as it relates to smoking. Um, for the endorsement, I'm not sure if we envision them having to come back to modify the endorsement or not, but I don't, either way, um, I think the scenario that you laid out would be picked up simply because the rules would, even if you had an endorsement for edibles, if suddenly smoking is allowed, there's so many rules that go with provide with allowing that to happen on your on site that you'd have to go through them anyway. Yeah, they'd have to do a premises modification because it's changing the mechanisms of their uh, <coughs> premises. So that would be kind of a trigger too. They'd have to do a premises Maybe. with the state. Well, adding in the ventilation systems, and right. they had to add in all the other stuff. So, separate room. <coughs> Well, It'd be the same I, I if, if they added a different method of <coughs> extraction. Like if they're adding a different product or whatever, it's kind of the same idea. They but then doesn't that. that come back to us? I mean, it seems like there's a little room for wiggle in there. The modifications? Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, we can and it, talk and about it. Would. And that's, that's kind of policy question, too, is do you want to see every new endorsement? Do you want to see every endorsement application? You know, and this was a question of similar with the modifications. You see major modifications, you don't see minor modifications. So it's kind of that'll be a question. Which ones do you want to see? I, I appreciate what Dean has done and the uh, flagging this issue for us. I think I still prefer the planning department's approach on this issue. I think if we, like, hypothetically, if the edible only consumption area were to pass and then we were to have the broader debate about smoking. Um, I think that would be a good time to insert more language that does what, what Dean is describing here, or what Chris is, to figure out some kind of trigger that says, if we, it could literally be in code that says, if you already have an edible only uh, endorsement uh, and you want to expand to, to smoking, then something additional happens, right? And that would be useful for a certain amount of time, right? Yeah, and, and, and I, generalized over time. Right, and I actually, I actually think that what Mandy and Chris have described, there probably is already a sufficient check that, I mean, it's so involved. Um, but insofar as we're worried, like you said, that it's not, I think that's something we could, if we ever do drop that amendment that takes the turns reserved into you can now have smoking, that would be a good time to also have an amendment that says, and then you can come back to us. Uh, Brian? Uh, sure. Brian, you have your hand up. Uh, I did, but I can address it when we were going through the Title 21 changes um, <coughs> in terms of what what modifications and would, would go to the assembly and what you'd like to see. Okay. Um, yeah, just real quick, uh, what Dean was whispering in my ear is whether or not um, the body feels like it should clearly identify one approach or the other right now so we know moving ahead, which are we going to spend time uh, crafting an endorsement um, scheme that envisions different types of endorsements, or do you want us to continue down the path of just having a single endorsement? Maybe. Yes, we don't. I think we were looking at. Once we go through the Title 21, if we look and say, oh, this needs to go through the planning commission then we put this thing off till the end of the summer anyway, and we might do them together. But if we decide, oh, this isn't worthy of planning commission, then we'll go with edibles. So can we make that decision? I mean, is that going to take, Dean doesn't have a whole lot of changes here, so we could look at these side by side I, right now. Yeah, through the chair, I think your, your point is well taken. Um, if you don't mind, we'd like to just, re we're almost done with Title 10. We'll get through yep. Title 10, get to the Title 21 question, and have a better okay, setting. Let's do that.
Right. It doesn't mean that we put it off at the end of the summer. It just means that we slow down the process and work more methodically. Right? We would be doing that now anyways. Because we want to handle the planning and zoning as cleanly as we can. Right. So we don't want to handle a ball of and mud and ask them to turn it into a sulfur. So <laughs> they'll make it better. <laughs> they will make it better. Okay. Um, so so back, back to the color draft, please. Are, are we going side by side with Dean then? I think where there, I think where there, where there are large discrepancies like the one that we just covered, mm -hmm. I think Dean should chime in. Um, but if you're okay, we'd like to just get through the first okay, round. So Chris Judy is going to continue on color version A. Okay. So we're on page ten of the uh, full color draft. Uh, the first item is a question that you asked, Mr. Chairman, on line seventeen and eighteen about whether or not we should um, allow people to consume tobacco. Um, we think given that the smoking ban still stands, you should leave that in there. You can come back and address that later. And it's a state, and it's a state requirement. Uh, moving ahead, lines 41 beyond, uh, section, all of section C. Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Um, tobacco smoking had fraud and said, unless uh, you were smoking, allowed smoking of marijuana. And I was just responding to your comment Mr. Wilton, so uh, if smoking marijuana should have had one of us smoking eating tobacco. And um, I did know that that's a possible preemption issue to look at. It's no more obvious to me. All right, thank you. Back to that one. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll come back to that issue. Uh, but line 41 on so section C, it's highlighted uh, because. <coughs> The, there was a question as to whether or not this had a place in Title 10 since it's it's kind of Title 21 y feeling. And in particular, um, on top of page 11, uh, sec, subsection 4, C4, we have completely removed because that is um, addressed in the Title 21 section. So everything uh, in subsection C minus Sub bullet four, it's a quite open question to the group as whether or not you want to see this in Title 10 or take it out and put it in Title 21. Question, uh, Regardless of whether we do this or not, you're, there is going to be a Title 21 portion, yes? Would that be a separate ordinance or would that be, in the, separate. be a separate ordinance? We've got okay. a separate ordinance for you. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I defer to this part. I have to all see here. Mostly because I was reading a version of the Title 21 draft that didn't do what Mr. Shuri described in earlier version. So that's my best version. We have the version swimming around. But the version I read said Title 21 that the <coughs> department would review for consistency with what it says here in C, so I just left all C. But I didn't know about how it was worded here. But I think that effectively the review would be saying, it's just the just language is here or there. So it's still be a planning department function. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And so I'm looking at the uh, on line 47, number two, page 10, uh, a smoke-free area for employees to monitor the consumption. Um, I, I was thinking that they might be able to use a window and or cameras, video cameras, to monitor it. That way the employees wouldn't necessarily have to be present in the smoking area or the consumption area, whatever you'd like to call that. I don't know if we need to add that specific language or not, but I certainly want it on the record that that, I think, would certainly be acceptable. Okay. It sounds like that would be covered by this. It could be a room with monitors. But right. Yeah, um, yeah, I I tend to agree with <coughs> Mr. Shuey's interpretation that issues that are very strongly Kind of focused on the Title 21 uses of the land, uses of the structure should be in the Title 21 tool, especially if, like what Mr. Gates said, that effectively uh, it will still be monitored by the planning department. All the way back at the beginning of this document, we made a decision to move certain functions to the planning department because de facto they already are. And so I would recommend that we follow the lead and make Title 21 issues Title 21 and not muddy the water with some reference right. or MOA. Right. Uh, when we were discussing this internally, um, there's kind of a general rule that you know, Title 21 doesn't enter the front door. But with marijuana, it's fairly unique in that we're asking for floor plans and 
things of that nature for marijuana that we don't necessarily ask for in other land use entitlements. But a lot of it has to do with the state requirements. Um, for these, in terms of ventilation, and in terms of uh, smoke for area to monitor uh, marijuana consumption, and that marijuana consumption are being isolated from the other areas, they do concern the floor plan, um, but they also do concern the operating plan as well. The operating plan is more akin to going into Title 10. I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing to put in Title 21. There's no downside to it. It's just where does it fit most appropriate? And uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, you know, lines 41 through 49, and then point three on page 11 probably would be more compatible with Title 10. Okay, Chris. So uh, before the meeting started, I was talking with our planning clerks and our health department staff, and the question that came up at the last meeting was, how does the, the health department do any enforcement? They don't enforce Title 10, they don't enforce Title 21, and issues of ventilation and things of that nature are building code issue also, not necessarily a licensing issue, and they're also a health department issue. And I hate to open the can even further, but does that then kind of require that we at least contemplate having sections of other titles that we work with to ensure that it conforms with the procedures of each department meaningfully and not just as a sidebar. You know, which, I mean, that's how the building code and the health department code are two that may have to be engaged. What's this I, be? I don't have a clear response, but in our current code in 1080, um, Article 8, the general provisions, it states that these various departments may enforce provisions of 1080. I understand the health department's concern, and uh, Mr. Hickman had mentioned that they would need to be designated. I think that you could have simply um, an amendment in Title 16 that says something in reference to 1080, but then each uh, enforcement officer of the health department. There, there's a document from the mayor. The mayor designates peace officers for enforcement of certain sections of the He would need to designate this right and other health department officers to enforce. And the written memo uh, designating them and which sections are ready to enforce. So that would be an administrative, I guess, fix. I'm not positive you need code fix, you could put some reference in code. But we would need to look at that enforcement side of things a little bit more. For the health code. And you have a question behind you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through the chair, uh, Ross Nelsinger, um, supervised by and for the municipality of Anchorage. Um, if all we're talking about is edibles, that would not warrant any sort of amendments to the building codes. Right. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Anyone else? Just, just a closing comment in this. Um, we, we'll spend some more time looking at the issue. I think uh, the concerns from the health department are, from, uh, are valid. You know, in the Title 16, the, the section of code that they enforce, it's very specific to that title only. So where, where appropriate, we can talk about expanding um, the enforcement powers of AHD so that they can play a role in this as well. Okay, 16 is our smoke-free ordinance in the health department. Uh, Title 16 is health broadly. The smoke-free ordinance is part of Title 16. Thank you. So currently, uh, code enforcement does the inspections to make sure they've got the ventilation system set up in the cultivation uh, areas and that. And so I would imagine they would also be doing the inspections in the consumption area. And so if they're doing inspections in maybe the health department <coughs> would need to get involved. Um, through the chair, I don't know the answer to that. I don't believe that code enforcement is going to go on premise to inspect the, um, the consumption, consumption area. They will focus on the external effects. In other words, the ventilation system is uh, the smell of marijuana detectable from the boundary or the property, uh, the edge of the property. However, I, I just want to add one comment. I, I prefer it staying in here. I understand that it sounds Title 21 Um I like it in here because, as Mandy or Ryan, one of them said, this really speaks to the operation of the license. And it's nice having it in here because this ties the requirement to uphold these um, 
operational characteristics as a condition of keeping the license. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you're not you're not talking about section four there, <coughs> line six through twenty. You're talking about the other elements. Or I'm just talking about section C. Yeah. Right. Okay. At large, all of it, because in here <coughs> I got it stricken out and said moved over. And four, so four is four is gone. I'm talking about section C numbers one through three. Thank you. Yeah. So, so that gets it. But so if we um, put it in Title 21, then it's attached to the special land use permit. Correct. And if it's in Title 10, then it's a license. Correct. We have a lot of latitude with the license, and a little bit less because it goes right. The license a little bit less with the land use permit. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And that's been important to us to be able to deal with this. So if it doesn't meet isolated from other areas, separated by walls. So this is the building smoke-free area to monitor. Yeah, this kind of goes with both camps. Okay, so Mandy, from your seat, is this fine? I think so, because this is also things that code enforcement could look for. I mean, they'll look to make sure that there's a separate <coughs> room for the viewing. Um, they'll look for potentially visible smoke if that is the path we go down. So they are able to monitor for those things. But as far as four, we felt that really had nothing to do with the licensing portion and the operation. That's more of the physical characteristics and the requirements for, you know, the fencing and all that. So that has moved to 21. But yeah, I think this portion is good in Title 10. Okay, you said, so code enforcement watches out for the Title 10 mm -hmm. requirements as well. Yeah. Yes, I think. Did you? <coughs> I, I uh, through the chair, Bob Dole, building official. When I've gone along uh, with the code enforcement visits, they go inside. They will look at the camera coverage. They will look at the doors inside, make sure they're watchful. Another thing inside the door, which is where this is different from other areas. So, in terms of a basic layout of those sorts of things inside the building, I think um, our code enforcement folks would be able to, to look at those things. Some of the packaging is on the edibles would be a stretch, but those physical layout right, so would be a go. Do you want to sit up here? Uh, I'm fine right here. <laughs> You're hidden behind Chris, so go real high. Right. There's no chair here anymore. We so. can bring that back. <laughs> yes, I'm happy right. back here. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, so um, where are we on this? Or can we, or, or do we have, would we like to see this uh, where, where it is then in Title 10? Or we decide now, or you want to contemplate it more? What I'd like to see when we're done is um, whatever decision we come to at the end about our official framework moving forward, that these two teams get together and bring us back a clean copy with their best thinking applied to the question based on what we've said today. So that we don't sit here with all of this kind of spaghetti and try to make sense out of it. Let's defer to them once we have a sense of where we're going. Some of it, but they wait to defer to what we would point up first too as we see Correct. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that's your preference. Well, uh, uh, through the chair, Mr. Constant, uh, that's our in, our intent. Um, you would have had only a single draft this week. We had a little bit of a scheduling snafu with the teleconference uh, between all parties, which is why we ended up with two tracks. But by next week, there will only be one document. There's just several policy directions we need the committee to decide this is one. And you want it now, which way to go? From us. Sure, please. Go ahead. <laughs> I like what the planning department has done. So, um, oh, oh, this. So they, this would stay. This uh, D. So the sorry, other portions would stay, and four would be. Yeah, four, four would be taken out. Um, you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, it sounds like it works. It sounds like Mandy's side is fine with it. Um, I've heard complaints about it, so I guess that works. So let's go forward with that. So this C. Mm -hmm. Right in here will stay. Yeah, C1 title. through 3 will stay. 4 <laughs> does come out and it'll be addressed when we pick up the Title 21 draft here later. Okay, so this and this is in your Title 21 draft. Correct. Okay, so you got that good. Okay, okay, so Chris. Yeah, back on, I'm on page 11 now. Um, so we've completed Section C. In Section D, um, we, we're going through the document of updating <coughs> references to the municipal clerk or the clerk's office and pointing people back to the planning department. Um, so that that is uh, one change you see on line 23. Um, moving down to line 42, this is uh, one of the references to the ventilation requirement 
and whether or not the extreme ventilation requirements for smoking also apply to edibles. Um, we have left this section in primarily because uh, it has the caveat that if consumption by ventilation is to be permitted. So the way that um, the four of us have read that, municipal legal uh, planning, of course, office and myself, is that uh, if you're not getting an endorsement for in smoking and for inhalation, sorry, uh, then you don't need to meet the criteria of this ventilation section, which makes sense if you're not smoking in a space, then it should have just general regular space uh, ventilation requirements. Um, that's why this section is highlighted. Um, I think, Andy, you highlighted it, right? And, and then we did add one new sub-bullet. It's on the top of page 12 in the ventilation section. Sub-bullet 4, it's designed so there is no marijuana smoke odor in the retail area or at the lot line. Okay. Again, <clears throat> this will only apply, <clears throat> excuse me, in cases where the endorsement covers smoking, um, but we felt that when we get to that point, this will be an important um, policy point. <coughs> we, isn't it already the case that there can be no odor at the lot line? Yes. So really it's just about the fact that the separate retail area has to avoid the odor as well. Right. Yeah, I didn't have a, a thought, but I, I think that generally speaking, the retail establishments at this time don't have problems. It's not. And so, as we go forward, if there is any kind of consumption allowed that involves volatilization, then the issue of smell at the lot line becomes really important. So it's worthy of reiterating. Yeah. Can, can I ask a follow up and perhaps somebody from the industry to speak to this? Um, I've only been one, in one of these shops, I think, once. <laughs> Went in with my dad. <laughs> uh, but can not you can you not smell marijuana already in some of the retail establishments? I mean, for example, if they're showing the product to someone and saying, I want to smell this before I purchase it, and how would you determine that the smell is coming from the consumption area versus the retail area itself? And how concerned are we really that there is the smell of marijuana in a marijuana store? Good question. Uh, Hello, I would say it doesn't matter which side it's coming from, it shouldn't cross over the per the property line because it's a requirement that well, no marijuana establishment, you know, invade the neighbors with their smell. So I don't think it matters which side it comes from, it just shouldn't be happening at all. So I think that's what the ventilation addresses. I think the point here was, you know, you have a door between consumption and retail. How do you know if the smell goes well, through that door? There's a so within the smell retail. from marijuana smoke than there is from marijuana flour that's right. just yeah, in a jar. So there's definitely a difference. And the purpose there Chris. is not that you keep less smell in the store, but ultimately the purpose is to ensure that the environment where people are working mm. is smoke free. Right? Yeah. And so that's the rationale behind all of this is not so much that they don't smell on this or this smell, that smell, it's that smoke doesn't move across the line and that's possible. And so that's the core question that we're working on with that. Well, can I ask a follow-up question on that then? Yeah. I mean, I, I would still, from what I've heard so far, I would prefer taking this provision out because the lot line portion is redundant. And it might be true that you can tell the difference between different kinds of marijuana smells. I'm not sure if our regulators are trained to do that. Also. Um, a question I don't know the answer to. Is there a way to detect smoke that isn't smell-based? I mean, is there some other way for our regulators to determine whether or not uh, smoke, because I agree, smoke is really the issue, or the carcinogenic materials, but the smell is distinct from that. You're talking about like a smoke detector? <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose so. I, I looks like the building official is behind me, but I, I, I just, again, that Forbidding the smell of marijuana in a marijuana store um, seems to me to be a little bit foolhardy unless that is the only way we can determine whether or not these carcinogenic materials are, are, are impacting the employees. Fair enough. Mr. Chairman, just a quick point on that. Keep in mind, sub-bullet four is in the section that is detailing what the ventilation plans, if required, should achieve. So um, the concerns about how are we going to know if it's smell that we're smelling from people opening canisters to show bud versus we know it's coming from the room next door um, isn't really this isn't really put in here as a gotcha enforcement mechanism this speaks to the requirements of a ventilation plan should they have to need, should they require one 
and I think it's it makes sense in that regard because the state regulations are very clear that the uh, if you're allowing on-site consumption, smoking-based consumption, that it essentially has to be an isolated, self-contained space that deals yep. with its air content separately from the other facility. So in, in, in my mind, I, I think this is a good addition because it just reiterates that when you're designing your consumption space, you have to ensure that your ventilation system is handling all of the air from that space and doing so separately from the uh, retail space. Um, through the chair, um, Bill, we've looked at a technological solution uh, in reference to uh, assembly member Dunbar's question. We haven't found, although they're costly, they've been not particularly accurate and not at the level that we don't think it'd be more disruptive to the business without value added to the community. For, for odor? For, for odor or for smoke, both. We've looked for technological solutions out there because of that subjective element. Right. And Thank we you. don't believe there's one out there right now that's worthy of attention. Chris, I believe that there's a fusion of these two ideas. The idea of kind of the absurdity of saying you can't have the smell of marijuana in a marijuana store, but at the same time wanting to ensure that there is some protection in that retail area from the smoke. And I think that is to strike the word odor from that sentence. And then as the technology develops over time, what we're really aiming for is smoke. Right, not the odor, it's the smoke. And that, again, continues to be the ongoing problem that we're trying to tackle, and that would solve the conundrum. And the odor is already banned at the lot lines by other yeah. parts of the code. Yeah. Thank you. So, and, um, you know, the, I think there occasionally could be odor beyond the lot line just because you have people coming and going from the front door of a retail establishment, and if it's a busy Friday afternoon or evening, there could be several customers in there and they're examining product or something. I, I don't know how you could specifically stop that from happening. The, the people have to be able to go in and out of the front door. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no use having the retail business. Yeah, just real quick, um, and we can close this out. Um, all your points are appreciated. Um, this is not, <coughs> this is, designed as criteria or guidelines for or designing a ventilation plan. Ventilation, yeah. um, and, and I think with the stri uh, striking odor, which we're fine with, I think makes it read more clearly. It's just simply stating that when you design your ventilation plan, you should design it so there is no marijuana smoke in the retail area or at the lot line. Um, it's not an issue of, of odor any longer, and we can move past it. Okay, one last comment, though. That, that what we need to look at to answer that question is the actual enforcement at this time. On a busy Friday, every busy Friday since these stores have opened, there have been no known complaints unless they have an actual grow attached to their retail establishment. The retail establishments have no history of smell violations, and there's no reason to expect that opening and shutting doors now going forward will change that. And so I believe that we can act, hold belief that that will continue if they ventilate their properties properly, if they're allowed. So it's practice now shows no problem with reading. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're almost there. Okay. Chris. <coughs> okay. Uh, there's one other change right below that in D. Um, it used to just say they have to control unconsumed marijuana. Or I'm sorry, it used to just say that uh, the operation plan has to talk about how they address uncontrolled. We, we want them to, or unconsumed, we want them to control their unconsumed. Um, that's just a clarifying point. Um, Lines 16 through 29, I'm sorry, 16 through 40. Um, these are all items that are required for the special land use permit, and, and the comment from Mandy is whether or not it also should be moved to Title 21. Going back to our earlier description of what is operational plan based and what is land use or zoning based, uh, this is another one of those gray areas. Uh, I think you could argue both ways that this is both an operational requirement and a land use requirement or use requirement. So we left it in there and we leave it up to you to make that call. Um, I believe our recommendation would be to leave it in Title 10, leave it in as a license-based operational requirement. No, I don't. Chris? So these issues that we're talking about here, uh, I'm going to come back. Keep going. Sorry. Well, we, we should give the guidance here because we're, this is like the other section. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess the only opinion I'd have on this matter would be on uh, 
page, page 12, line 38, when it says within 250 linear feet of the boundaries, Title 21 requires 500 linear feet. So, mm -hmm. um, just to make it consistent with Title 21, change that to 500. Because that's what we're already noticing for. Where did the 250 come from? That's the state. state. Oh, okay. um, yeah. okay, you're back on two. Yeah, the, well, the question I have is, uh, the, I need some clarification on the special land use permits. Do these go with the title of the property, with the land, and do they outlast the license, just like the alcohol permits do? They don't, so they evaporate at the time the license is okay, thank you. Okay, let me jump up. Did you have I, I would just say that the sort of general practice of we try to disrupt the law as little as possible when we do these ordinances, and that would sort of militate towards keeping this here where it is, although making that 500 foot change. Okay, um, Ryan? Um, again, I would just kind of reiterate that you know, we already have the requirement in Title 21 that they submit you know, scaled dimension floor plan that shows all these, we don't specifically list out in bullet points everything they need to, to show, but it kind of goes without saying that's what you include in the floor plan. <laughs> so um, we also do require a uh, letter of authorization from the property owner, so that's you know addressed in three, and then um, yeah, notification or any protest uh, received by the public within 500 linear feet. That's our normal operating procedure. So I'm not even sure if this is necessary to well, it so would hurt it it's just a redundant, totally. completely redundant. Yeah, I don't think it would hurt anything to keep it in there, but we're already asking for it as is. So Chris, uh, Jenna. Um, and it might be a silly question, but I just want to make sure if we're putting stuff like this in Title 10, I want to make sure there's still a method to the community council. I don't, I don't I mean, maybe we haven't gotten to it yet, but I mean, we're, aren't we going to be required to have a community council meeting for this endorsement? Or, or yeah. we not? Oh, yeah, we are. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see it. It's, it's in Title 21. So it's in Title 21. So I guess my question is, if we're putting a lot of stuff in Title 10, is that going to, is that notice and that information going to cross over? Okay. This is already existing. Code. Yeah, it already goes through. Yeah, no. that's going to be a very similar process. Okay, so just kind of like the same. Okay. Okay. Thank e? you. Sorry. Um, in this paragraph 4 about notice, I, I, uh, Took the approach of deleting most of this just referred to an affidavit that the uh, most requirements required by 2103 28 the most requirements have been met rather than saying all this to keep it consistent with what we all want to do. Sure. So, I think that be a good point. That, that notice includes the two people that part of the area plus community resources. Okay, so we'll, that's the question then, is we have Dean's version, paragraph four, and this one. Can I get back to you? You can. And then the version in uh, color version A. Okay. What page are you on, Dean's? This is on Dean's 11, line 13, mm -hmm. comparing with the version A, the color version, page 12, line 36. Dean's is... Um, just refers to Title 21. So if we go in Title 21, it looks like Dean's wording is. If we say put it in Title 21, is Dean's wording appropriate? It's in Title 21. I didn't put it in 21. I just refer to Title 21. Right. Yeah. The Title 21 section. But, but if, with this wording, does it then dump it on you guys to deal with? Yeah, right. It, it does anyway. Do it. Yeah. 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 it does anyway. So is that a clean way to so far, but I'm like, you okay with that? <clears throat> or do you still think it should just come out all together? Yeah, it's, it's all of section two. Two four zero. Yeah. So I guess the new recommendation from us would be to just, given these these issues, just strike all of the highlighted section two, three, sure. and four. Okay, we strike it, and it goes into title twenty one. Yeah. It's, it's, right. it's in there. Yeah. It's in there. Okay, okay we good with that? Yep, I just would like to add a little clarification. Um, Ms. Waltzine mentioned a community council meeting and. Uh, I just want everyone to continue to recognize that, that it is not a community council meeting. It is a community meeting, and that the community council is the preferred location, but should that not be available because the community council decides not to make it available, an applicant may host another meeting at a location of their choice. So it's a community meeting, not a community council meeting. I just want everyone to be really clear because I hope 
that the councils continue to do the good work that I have heard most of them doing at making themselves available to applicants when they have a question. So, right, right. Some of the community councils will meet in the summer, though. Right. So. Any number of reasons. Okay, so we are striking all of two. <laughs> and then three and four. Three and four. Three and four. Notification requirements. 
just a clarification. And line. Just a second. And, and that's where we dealt with that 500 feet, 1750 is in there. Correct. Correct. Yep, that's all tied together. It's already in there. And then line 15, um, that just adds to the application submittal requirements. So it's just a clarification applications for a marijuana license, special use permit for marijuana, and any associated endorsements shall be submitted to the municipality and form provided by the municipality. Jump into page three. First edit here would be lines three through six. Uh, this is not uh, in, in reference to uh, marijuana consumption, but it's just a cleanup of current code to get rid of uh, a code section that, for all practical purposes, doesn't really seem to, to make sense. Um, so this would be the case where you have a uh, standalone retail store, or it could be a, uh, a shell within a strip mall. And that entire shell was included in the licensed premises area, but now, say the, the licensee wants to do some interior remodeling to get rid of a storeroom or employee break room, this business is booming and they want to put in more sales counters. Because they're increasing their retail sales area by more than 20%, that they'd have to go back to the entire assembly process when the assembly's already deemed that that entire shell of a business is acceptable to operate and sell marijuana within. Right. Um, so. uh, I was wondering, so did you see the cleanup in, like on page 3, lines 12 21? They're not really related to on site consumption of the store. Do you want to make this exclusively about on site? Do you want to make those cleanup provisions to you? I guess that's the question. I yeah, and, and that is a good question to pose right off the bat here is whether or not uh, the committee would like to take this opportunity to do some Title 21 cleanup or would you like me to separate out anything that's not related to marijuana consumption into a separate issue? I think the question that needs to be answered in order to answer that question is do those changes cause a kind of tilting over into the scale of changes requiring a visit to plan and resort? Right. And so that's really, um, if the operating question we're resolving here today is what path does this overall effort take? If those changes cause people grave enough concern that it flips the whole project, then that's the question that needs to be answered. Yeah, and through the chair, um, I think we would still agree that it does not, <clears throat> simply because of the argument that Ryan laid out at the beginning. When, when planning and zoning deals with issues, they're dealing with the, the four walls or the shell, as you called it. If you're deeming that everything within the, those four walls is a licensed marijuana retail establishment, we don't necessarily feel that it matters too much if it's 75% retail and 25% break room or 90% retail, 10% break room. And then that would, the same question would be for any generalized change cleanup. Right. So not just this one line and every one. But we're also fine with pulling it out. Uh, that's correct. And, and Mr. Chair, I just say that. Uh, all of the cleanup that I'm proposing here have been from previous changes that this committee has taken part in that planning and zoning was not approved. Um, so. Okay, so I have a question on uh, so deleting uh, uh, from subsection 4B and then uh, this 5. Is there this is if they grow within a certain limit, it comes back to us and we've been doing that. I think we actually expand it so smaller stuff when it comes to us when we tweak this before. Are there places remaining where they would have to come to us if it grows? Why does this adjust somewhere else? So we I think we do want to see it if they grow twenty percent or whatever it is. So so Mr. Chair, if the shell of the business is growing Yes, twenty percent or more. Then you absolutely would, would see it, and you would still see it through this modification. What this these two deletions address is any internal changes right. within that previously approved shell. And uh, in my mind, we'd already done that change. I think we, we dealt, dealt with that, that before. Um, there was a minor change in one of the previous ones that I remember talking about it, but I think we discussed it was only in a certain. I don't believe that we've addressed it. Oh, okay. I don't think we have. Okay, so if the shell of the operation grows more than 20%, it comes back to us. Absolutely. Okay, and then is it 33% for cultivation? Uh, so, so, yeah, we are 
jumping down here a bit, um, so lines 12 through 16, that would be in reference, um, much like lines three through six were for retail, lines 12 through 16 are for cultivation. Um, and and they, these two ideas came about because they did have a cultivator that was planning on doing some pretty substantial alterations to the insides of the business and their interior layout. And they had some passageways um, that were just common passageways within the building. They weren't used for, for cultivation, but because they would now be constructing within those previous uh, passageways and putting plants there, they would have to go back to the assembly even though the entire building was included in their license premises. So to me, it just didn't seem to make sense to have them go through the entire of the process when we've already deemed that that building is appropriate at that scale to grow. So, but if a marijuana cultivation establishment expanded its shell by what percent? Twenty percent. So twenty. So there's wording elsewhere, not in this document, that says Correct. the shell increases by twenty percent for retail cultivation, <coughs> um, manufacturing, and so on. Then it goes back to it. Correct. And I just didn't include that that additional language, but I can put that in for context. So, so we know we don't lose this real quick, but we don't lose that. Okay. Because I think this makes sense. And like I said, I thought we'd already done it. So, um, okay. Any, any issue with that? See, look. Of course. Chris, I think I'm on that. Kathy? Uh, yeah, Kathy Blakeson. Um, I just was curious because it's been a while since I've looked at all this stuff. But um, if it were increased by more than 20% of the retail bar, I mean, would that have to address? level of parking and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I would think that anything beyond the 20%, it should come back to a review because <coughs> there could be ramifications on the exterior you're talking about interior. You're talking about if the interior space changes. Yeah. So the parking calculations are done based on the total square footage of the shell. So it's so already... So what do we get on Okay. okay. I think just to clarify what Chris was saying is he's saying that the entire license, like retail area, that's what you base your parking off of. And so if it expanded off the side exterior shell at point, then you come back here. So yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. So we generally have announced till 1030, we're past that, but we'd like to finish this. So. I think we can. I think we can. <laughs> so uh, jumping back up to line eight, uh, eight through 10. So <laughs> this would be, uh, <coughs> where a modification to an existing special use permit, um, the addition of an indoor or outdoor marijuana consumption area or an increase of the existing on-site consumption area more than 20% would go back to the full assembly um, for that modification. Anything 20% or less would be delegated to the planning director for approval. Does it make sense to have it here if we have elsewhere the 20% for the shell? I mean, so you're saying somewhere else in code not shown here, an increase of 20% comes back to us, but... Well, the, this, um, this one's a little bit different, Mr. Chairman. This, this, is, this is specifically addressing the interior space. Correct, and, and it's specifically addressing marijuana consumption area, not necessarily retail space. There are some, of course, differences between okay. the two. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. All right, so then um, we previously discussed lines 12 through 16, so jumping down to lines 18 through 21. Uh, this just slightly modifies some language that's existing in code and uh, would <coughs> allow the, the planning director the ability to determine whether or not the uh, addition of a type of extraction not previously approved for a marijuana manufacturing assembly had negative impacts on neighboring properties and therefore would have to go back to the full assembly for approval. And the reason for this uh, edit would be is if we have a marijuana manufacturer that's you know, currently using CO2 but they didn't mention in their application that they want to start doing uh, just buy a rosin press machine, they would have to go back to the, to the full assembly just to put a small rosin press machine in the uh, licensed premises area. So if this just delegates it as a minor modification that the pl uh, planning director um, can approve. Any issues with that? And Chris, you worked a lot on that. Approve mm -hmm. various levels of extraction. So this is unrelated to the consumption space, right? Correct. Right. And so as long as we're not talking about licensing one of those joint retail and 
cultivation locations or what do we have them we have yeah we have joint cultivation and retail so if we're talking about having consumption at the same place as we're having retail, it's the same place we're having cultivation, and you're dealing with CO2 and other chemicals, I think we have to have some high level of review. But if we're talking, again, just a standalone retail operation, fine. So I think that it's fine as they propose, as long as you're not talking about an operation that has multiple uses. You know? So this is um, this grants a similar level of discretion to the planning director to make that call that they uh, that that she currently that the director would have um, for other um, other provisions of the retail sales slot. So I, d I don't see it as in, right, as removing any sort of right. oversight of this process. It just it it streamlines it a little bit because it does not require that every change go <coughs> through assembly approval. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Just again, as long as we're not mixing production, retail, and hanging out for a while, you know, cultivation. You know, just that to me is an area that's gray and should be very carefully considered. Okay, Dean. Um, regarding what you said, if there's co-located retail and cultivation operation. I can think of that. Uh, not cultivation, I meant, uh, what's the other Manufacturing. license? Manufacturing. Manufacturing. Yeah. Manufacturing. I don't think that those could get on site and be used because it's not a free standard retail store. Uh, right, we're not. Store. Okay. And so, it's, it, this, part is not, this part is not related to the on site. Yeah. yeah, and then it's reasonable, I believe, to defer to the planning director a modest change. Okay, so we're comfortable in that. Okay, moving on. All right, so the next edit um, will be line 29 and 30. And this is just a requirement that the planning director submits. Uh, currently, it's a quarterly report to the assembly regarding changes requested and approved. Uh, I'm proposing an annual report. For the record, I objected to this, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was originally a semi annual report, then it moved to quarterly. Um, but what we're seeing now is that we're just not seeing a, a ton of minor modifications and just due to staff time it takes to repair, prepare those reports, it, it just makes more sense to have it as an annual report rather than a quarterly. Uh, I, I compromise and go to semi-annual. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, what has been our, we haven't really worried about it. I mean, we have to. This is a Ryan and Chris fight, not us. Well, we're in the isn't on the <laughs> what, what, We are. What matters <laughs> is violations and other matters that we get at a semi regular opportunity. But these, if we aren't seeing any problems, then it's reasonable to push that timeline out. And I think that we would ask then if there was a spate of these massive volume of them and we saw some change of pattern, that you would bring that back to us. And yeah, we I'm would reconsider the question. Yeah. We could make it um, at least annually, and then that way there's the discretion that if there's more, they could do a report of a cluster of them, and then, but they would have to do it annually. Well, in some sense, the annual's done because the license comes up. True. This, maybe this is the stuff, but the license comes up every year. Don't we see <coughs> with the license? Oh, they expand. We get that kind of information <coughs> with the license renewal. They change the name, ownership yeah. has changed. I don't so know it's, if I it's get just the part of that process. We don't, yeah, we don't capture though. the minor mods in that, though. They're, they're not That's in there. That's strictly they're not. dealing with the licensing <coughs> changes. Those, those um, changes that don't go before the assembly, they come to you as kind of a, the information with the renewal, but it's only dealing with the license changes. And does that argue to just include this in the annual licensing review? Like we could, yeah, I mean, that would be an easy, you guys just sent that to me. I could attach that on as one of the documents to the renewal. Um, and and Rio, you, you do a whole, everything's the same deadline, and we were getting a batch of them at once, so I would just sync it with that. So when we say these are the renewals coming up, then we can see who's grown or shrunk or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chair, I, I do have uh, one of these reports in, in pace, in, in route to the assembly, um, it should be coming either this next meeting or the one after. So you could review that report and see is this something we want to see annually or semi annually? Um, because you'll see that before you see this likely. Okay. 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 Do you want to put at least annually or just leave it? I mean, we, we can pretty much ask you for that stuff anytime we want it, right? You could. Yeah. We, we like the at least. Okay. At least. Don't know. <laughs> That's good language. 
<laughs> you know, it's, you, we, there are a lot of things that might be useful in reporting. We want to know to ask for them. So unless there's a system built to do that, we'll never see it. Okay. Sure. But, okay. Uh, yeah, we have, have this room. Next edit starts on uh, line 44 through 47. That's just uh, clarifying language that uh, all marijuana establishments are required to obtain you know, a license and associate endorsements. That's a grammatical connect, uh, correction to capitalize S in state of Alaska. Um, one second. I can, uh, okay, the interpreters need to leave in about 10 minutes, so I want to make sure if Dean five has five. If Dean has anything. Um, okay. Dean, do you have anything to, are you going to be able to hang with us at all? Or? Well, um, I guess you know, we can get into it more next week, but in my draft, I have amendments to 1665, so I'll just suggest you take a look at what I wrote before next week. And uh, we will work out some of those. Okay, thank you. All right, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Chair. Um, uh, and then it just goes on to say, and the license and associate endorsements from the municipality of Anchorage before beginning operations. Moving on to page four, uh, lines two through four. So this is uh, in the case of if an endorsement is suspended or revoked, the associated licenses may not be required to cease operations as determined by the director. So this would be the case where if we had a retail operation with an uh, on-site endorsement and if there was some egregious violation, that they could lose the endorsement, but they wouldn't necessarily have to shut down the retail operation. And it would be up to the planning director to determine whether or not the retail uh, operation should be shut down as well. Um, you know, whether it was just a case of rowdy consumers on site one day, or whether it was a case of underage consumers being served and not consuming on site. You know, those are two different situations. <coughs> I would just suggest after C, you put retail in there so it's really clear, because it could be read that. Even if they lose the endorsement, they wouldn't have to cease operation of their on-site consumption, right? And so, I would, just one word: retail operations. Okay. Yeah. I, right now, we have it worded rather broadly, um, just because there could come a day where we have other endorsements. I don't know what those endorsements would be, but it could be an endorsement for a cultivation facility or manufacturing facility. Each of those at this time are licenses, but the fact is, the way I read this, if I were a not so um, ethical attorney, I would argue on behalf of my client that while it says we don't have to cease operations, I know it's determined by the director, but I think we don't want to put the director in that position. Right? Don't we want to be clear that it's the base license doesn't have to be terminated? But it, it, but it could be. It could be. I mean, that's yeah. No, that's, I understand that. It doesn't have to be. But this does not say that it has to be. It's up to the discretion of the planning director. I, I see a legal hole there. So do what you want. I mean, to be <coughs> on. Uh, John Redden, uh, Great Number Cannabis. Uh, if I was the attorney, I would argue that the director may not do that at all based on the language of that sentence. So I, that essentially, we would want to change the language to allow to explain the discretion of the director. All right, thanks. Dean? Uh, I think that's an important point because we do have a process for uh, providing due process for suspension of vacation in, in 1080 and, and I think as well to time 21 and that doesn't leave it up to the director's discretion. We just need to look at this in our redraft next week because okay. I think there's a process. I think, that's, I think that's the assembly's call. I don't think that's the director's call. Okay, um, so we have direction maybe it should be the assembly's call and, and I actually kind of like I found this language a little convoluted because it's not license doesn't cease operations. I mean, uh, I mean just it's right. Was yeah. that crystal clear? So I, I think so. We're I guess we're looking for a direction here where we include the assembly then if the license is revoked. So I get that right. the assembly. So in the Title Ten changes that is included in page fifteen and sixteen of the color draft. So the or endorsement was added to all of the language there for um, suspension or revocation, and it's as or endorsement, so they're separated and can be dealt with separately. 
So you could either, and these do go before the assembly. So. <clears throat> so we're both getting endorsements to come to the assembly, but also, and at that point, we would say you're losing everything. Yes. Yeah. That's also on Yeah, the so table. it's revocation of the license or endorsement. And so you could pair them together or do them separately. And we'll incorporate that into this. Okay, Chris. I would just add that um, I appreciate the director having the um, kind of authority to make a determination, but can we maybe consider <coughs> making the determination until the assembly has had an opportunity to fulfill the due process rights. Well, the, the direction, um, through the chair, the direction we, we're getting from the committee and from the existing Title X is we're going we're gonna to change this entirely and remove the director's discretion. From what, what I'm saying, though, is that there could be a time period in which the assembly can't meet in a timely way. Ten days might pass, seven days or something. <coughs> and so... Those provisions exist in Title X. Okay, so the director can You're make covered. that determination. Those are covered already. Okay. Good. Okay. So you're gonna um, rewrite that preferred title. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Roger here, Dean. Um, move on. All right. Uh, next edit is uh, line six, and that's just adding licenses <coughs> and endorsements. This body maker shall be issued in accordance with uh, title ten. Then uh, uh, lines ten through fourteen deal with signs, and there was recent updates to the state regulations. Uh, to get rid of the prohibition for freestanding signs for marijuana establishments, and this just um, goes in line with, with the state regs, and it gets rid of that prohibition. Thoughts on that? Uh, if we were looking to, you know, if we're concerned about what would tip this into the place where planning and zoning review is necessary or not, this is one of the things where I think planning and zoning might be a little more interested. Um, so I think this is a revision that is worth doing at some point, but might not be something that's appropriate for this for this ordinance. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, just through the chair, we're making a number of Title 21 corrections because of the new uh, regulations promulgated from the state in this vehicle, and I think it's the direction of the assembly that you only want to deal with on-site consumption in this, that's fine, but there's a number, of, we just went over three of them, in fact, uh, yeah. a number of small tweaks that uh, bring us in line with the new state regulations. I'm just thinking from the perspective of the public, some tweaks are more noticeable and larger than others, and this is a larger tweak. Oh, we think signs is a larger tweak. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And it's outside the door. It's, it, all right. It is. I mean, visible. this prohibition was was added through this committee. So I mean, I think what is given can be taken taken away, but. Uh, but if that's the direction, and we wait to go to planning. Uh, it was given without going through planning and zoning? Correct. Oh, interesting point. Yes. So uh, whatever the committee decides, I think that um, if the committee decides to leave it fine, the committee says to pull it out, I would like to see this as a separate civil ordinance that yeah. we move through the process as soon as we can. I would prefer that. So we prefer it come out. I would prefer this come out and be a separate ordinance. OK. okay. Do you have other Title 21 changes? I mean, they, this is a small thing to come through planning commission and everything. That's we, we, so we regularly bring you a, um, what we call omnibus Title 21 corrections to fix small things like this. That would, this would be a great candidate for that, too. So, so you're going to pull this change? And yes. when, when, when might we see that? Shortly. I could, I mean, the, the language is already drafted. It's just pulling it out of here and putting it in a separate document. I could run them concurrently with marijuana. Well, no, we roll it in with, with omnibus changes. So and the short answer is soon. I just don't know exactly when it's determined. Okay. Two months or four? Yeah, within, yeah, within that time. Okay, let's do that. I think that's a good idea. I, I think this is something worth discussing. Kathy? Yeah, Kathy Rosen. Um, could you just clarify again? I, I uh, apologize for my ignorance on what passed at the state level. So are you saying um, because the state addressed signage in a certain way and the assembly addressed signage in a different way and it passed its original ordinance, um, they, they don't match anymore? Is Basically, yeah, the rules have changed. The, the local ordinances that implemented the marijuana regulations reflect the state state rules. State rules have changed as of, I think, last month, and we're updating our local rules to match. Uh, are, the, are the current ones at the local level, at the municipal level, more stringent than yes. the last state? Yes. It's, does not the municipality have the discretion of requiring the more strict yep. uh, regs for signage? So I think that might be um, you know, an issue for the council and you know, just neighbors and property owners uh, adjacent or nearby. But you know, I think the community as a whole.
whole, and I could be wrong, um, appreciated the very low-key, discretional type um, outside visual of, of marijuana establishments now. And if all of a sudden that got relaxed and we started seeing more outside signage, it might be an issue. Okay. And, and I think we well, said we're well, well, pulling it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just FYI. Right. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, any other thoughts? Okay. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Uh, line 32. This is just a grammatical correction to change it from direct retail sales to the general public. Is prohibited to general retail sales to the general, to the general public are prohibited. Uh, in line 34, there's just a clarification that for marijuana cultivation facility, marijuana consumption is prohibited. And uh, lines five and line seven are very similar, um, identical corrections. Just a grammatical correction of uh, uh, from is to are, and clarifying the marijuana, marijuana consumption is prohibited. Um, same with testing. And then there's just a, a numbering correction on line nine. And same, same corrections for testing, so that'd be lines 23 and 25. And moving on to page six, uh, lines five through seven. This is just a, an addition of a use specific standard to a marijuana retail sales establishment that marijuana consumption areas as defined by um, Title 10 shall comply with all applicable characteristics. And that points you back to Title 10 and um, the operational characteristics of a marijuana consumption area. And lines 9 and 10, uh, that's where that uh, recommendation for a site obscuring fence from the state regulations was incorporated into our code. Uh, there is no clear uh, definition for uh, the definition of the state regulations for site obscuring fence wall or fence don't match the definition for site obscuring wall or fence in Title 21. Site obscuring in Title 21 defines a, a fence or wall where 25% of light or images can be seen through it. Uh, a screening fence is one where nothing can be seen through it. It's entirely blocking. And that's my assumption. I've got an inquiry out to the state to do a clarification on that. That was two weeks ago and I haven't heard anything back, so I'll follow up with them. But. Okay, so where would that definition go? It's already uh, it's the screening that says 100%? Screening is already in total. Oh, I got you. Okay, yep. so where that's defined. Yep, it's just a discrepancy between the definition of site obscuring in Title 21 and site obscuring in the state regs. So you've got the screening, which is more... Which is 100% can't see anything. Okay, okay. Forrest? No, I, I'm, I'm waiting. <coughs> I want to hear where he got the 100 square foot for uh, for parking. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry no, uh, Brian, I just, I just want to have no height for the, for the fence. So people probably want to... Know how uh, height would be regulated under fencing um, under chapter seven. Oh, okay. So you just go to the same definition that says the height. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So whatever your local zoning district is. Okay. I think we have the same question. Yeah. Okay. Chris Hudy? No, I was just we're okay. ready to go. So, um, okay, so we're comfortable with those. Go ahead, Brian. All right. And then bulk it down for off street parking spaces required. Um, so in uh, <coughs> discussions with the traffic engineering department, we're looking at existing uses in code that might be op this might be similar to. And you know, would a customer enter the, the space and how long would they likely be within that space? And what other uses is that similar to? So a restaurant was the closest parking requirement that we could compare this type of operation or how it's anticipated to operate. You know, a customer, unlike a retail situation where you come in and somebody's spending maybe 10, 15 minutes on site and leaving, this type of establishment, they're going to be there for 45 minutes plus, hour, two hours. Uh, not really quite sure, but that's what um, anticipated. So that's where you get the one for 100 square feet gross floor area for marijuana consumption areas. Uh, well, I, I want to hear. I'm wondering if a restaurant actually is analogous to a marijuana consumption facility, and I'm not familiar enough with how these facilities operate. Maybe none of us are either because this doesn't exist yet. Right. The city has a tendency and has that tendency for a long time to wildly overbuild parking, right? And 100, this to me seems like we're, we're going to, again, way too much parking. Um, and so I, I, uh, 
I guess I, I need to learn more about whether or not that standard is appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, two questions on that. Are cafes regulated in the same way as restaurants? Coffee yes, shop? It, yeah, they're restaurants. Yep. Coffee shops, then. So, um, I wonder if we could, is it just for the area that is used for consumption? Or is it, if you have an operation that has this endorsement, you need all of this parking for all of your areas? Uh, through the chair, it would just be for the marijuana consumption area. So if you had 200 square feet, it would, you would need two parking spots additional, not if it was 1,800 square feet, but 200 was reserved, you would need 18 more parking spots. Correct. Okay, thank you. Are we, are we setting up a system where, so this would not apply to the downtown shops, is that correct? Correct. Are we setting up a system where basically only the downtown shops would be able to have on-site consumption because of how stringent our, our parking cool. requirements here are? I think, and can, can we hear from people that would actually run these shops? Okay, Well, so parking, this 350 requirement anyways has been really difficult for shops to reach because it's a ton of parking and it doesn't really fall into the, you know, walkability of the city. Plus, I don't know why you'd want to make it easier for people that are coming to consume on site to, to actually like, come, drive, park consume and go I mean you probably want to make it more of like oh okay I'm gonna take an uber there or cab there and then I'm gonna go hop around do what I'm gonna do and not drive <coughs> so I'm not sure why you want to increase the comfortability for people to drive and consume there but that's just a thought this hundred Good foot point. is gonna really put a lot of people that could do this out of being able to do it because they can't even start the parking hard right well, in, in a restaurant or a bar that serves alcohol has the same parking requirement, so I wouldn't say that we are encouraging people to drive and, and consume and drive home, but I wouldn't be all, all, all parking is <laughs> encouraging people that. to drive, and that's uh, a yeah. fundamental problem with their parking. Right. So, so wait, I'm sorry, just, how does this compare to bars? It's the same. It's identical. It's the same. The identical. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the problem that we're facing is that there is no science behind this. There's, there, there's no parking calculations that have been done by the industry you know, or, or the professional traffic engineering industry. So mm -hmm. what we have is, is what is existing in code to compare to. Um, we've chosen a very conservative route. Um, it may be over parked, but we won't know that until these operations are up and running. So I think that the logic that you have used to get here is, is sound under the old paradigm where we always encouraged a ton of parking. And I think we need to, this is just one place, but there are lots of places in our code where, I, you know, I, I have gone on record saying I want to um, reduce parking. And, and, and I know that that is not popular with the public because of the way we sort of structured our society and the way we conceive of parking. Um, but I think that this plays into that old paradigm in a way that I think is counterproductive. So I, I would like to see a very different parking standard. I, I would like to hear from maybe the Turnigan Community Council and Mark on whether or not community councils are finding that parking right now is a problem and getting any complaints from the community on parking. Oh, let me, I'll, let me, we'll work our way there. Okay, so, but I think that would be a good input. I can say, you know, with, with these meetings, because we got somewhat limited times, assembly members can only talk as a group at a public meeting. Actually, that door should probably be open. Um, so if you feel shut out, it's because we have this limited opportunity, but every single one of you can contact every single one of us at any time of the day. So it's okay. not, and, and we're very early in the process here. So this is, um, um, and, and so it's not the full-blown public hearing level like we have at the assembly or the emails and phone calls you can make. I have a question for these folks. So my question could be for Jan or any of the operators, especially operators that are contemplating they would operate one of these <coughs> facilities, what is the scale inside of your currently licensed retail establishment that you're looking at to convert to a consumption space? Do you have any guess? I mean, how big are we talking about? You keep it good one, Aaron. And Andrew, come on and Kim. Okay, you keep it brief. Let's just, just give him a number. Square feet. <laughs> square feet of, sorry. Of your oh, retail okay. space that you would convert to oh. a consumption space. I'm I'm actually not planning on it because I just redid my whole retail. Okay, so, so if you were, 
So basically, I, for Kim, if she did, it'd be about 600 square feet, which this would knock her off the ability to do it. Her site plan doesn't allow room for parking. <coughs> for Aaron, Uncle Herb's, it would be an outdoor area in the back, and you, your parking wouldn't allow for it. Yeah, we don't need well, this one. Wow, this this would kick them and their standalone industrial warehouse. It would kick them out of the out of the park for this. This one allow it, and then I don't I don't know about Great Northern. We have no existing or contemplated facilities that would comply. Or would we have enough space in order to do on site consumption? So it's kind of a good point for us at the point. At this point. I don't know about Aaron. Actually, Aaron, you're you're back. Something in the works. Yeah, I I have. Can you say your name? Myself. So, oh, Aaron. Sure. Um, I, I've considered it, but I haven't gotten that far. Anita Burke, um, I just also want to offer a different context. Um, the actual smoking and use of marijuana, um, many places like Denver and other places are imagining people dropping in here for 15 minutes. It's not a place like a bar where you're going to hang out and drink with your buddies and keep drinking and keep doing all that sort of thing. What's the it's a safe place for people to consume and then enjoy events, enjoy other things. Um, I, and I, I would just like to open the mental model up to those different kinds of actual <coughs> consumption experiences. And um, just wanted to offer that in for your consideration. Okay, briefly. Um, Jake Gordon, Canabasca. So we bounced around ideas for our tutor location depending on if we can fit one in there under the guidelines of cultivation being right there. But we would assume it would be about the size of this room. And if we're not going to do uh, on-site smoking right now, it would be something similar, something that we allow for educational experiences for people to have. Um, where we're starting things on Sundays where we have people from the industry come and talk about specific things, you know, how to roll <coughs> joints, um, terpenes, things like that. Um, and that's where what I would design if we were able to put something in tutor. Um, location. Our downtown spot would be more of a restaurant based on what we're talking about today, um, but it doesn't need to put parking um, spaces on site. But we, they just have a, they just put a, like a public parking one right next to it. So I was going to raise the question, does that, does that count as off the street parking? You're, you're, you're not required to have parking in downtown. Yeah, you're downtown. Okay, um, so this is an issue and um, <coughs> I just, uh, just because he's, uh, of course, chimed in. I agree with the paradigm where we do a whole lot of driving in this world, and I hope we hit that someday. But right now in our society, if you buy a car in our general population, the thought is I get to park it wherever the heck I want to, as close to that front door as possible. And if I don't get that, there's something wrong with our society. So the reality is, if people are going somewhere, how many of us drove our cars here? Um, I get to drive my car and I get to park it. And if it's a lawn, if it's a sidewalk, Blocking some of that, it doesn't matter. I get to park my truck wherever I want. And that is where our society is, and the reality has to be dealt with. Because if we don't require parking, they'll find a place to park and it'll be ugly. And I was going to ask, did you look at other states' parking requirements if they offer something similar? Like how San Francisco has the on site? Have you looked at any other states that could be similar for? Uh, to my knowledge, traffic engineering does not. Um, okay, so in interest of time, we are going to come back next week with some revised, and this could be um, more research or just make it red, and we'll address it more then. Yeah. I mean, just a suggestion. Why don't we just treat it like the rest of retail? It's a retail shop. We, it's already in the retail shop. Why not just not call out consumption in the in the in the parking regs? We, they already have parking requirements for this retail space. But the way that a retail store operates and the way that a consumption area operates are two different animals. And I, I think there's a lot of assumptions being made right now, and we're okay. choosing a very very conservative approach to it. Yeah. Um, but it, we're also making the assumption that they're going to be operating the same as a retail facility, and which I don't believe they will. Um, I think people are, you're going to have some people that hang out, and you're going to have some people that just come and consume and leave, um, just like any other bar or restaurant. So to compare the two, I don't think it's a, a drastic uh, or, or you know, overstepping any current uh, understanding. Good morning. Um, we're 1105. The interesting yeah, place that I'm getting about parking is that um, 
with these licensed retail establishments, their neighbors are encroaching on their parking in the off hours. <laughs> that's actually what I, I'm hearing from Anchorage that's happening. And so uh, all of this parking is being required and other contiguous uses don't have it. And so they're consuming their neighbor's property. And uh, sometimes with a sense of entitlement, which is an amazing thing to witness. And so there's a, an interesting mix of uh, implications with this concept. People park on the park line. All right. Uh, so section five. So this is very similar to what we had done in previous sections. This just incorporates the changes into old code, um, which affects the downtown. So I can go line by line here. Um, first edit would be page seven, line twenty-four through twenty-six. Again, this just adds uh, language to the modification that the addition of an indoor outdoor on-site consumption area or increase in the existing on-site consumption area more than 20% would have to go back to the assembly. Um, and then, uh, my apologies, but backing up lines 19 through 22 also is a deletion of the increase in retail sales area within the licensed premises of more than 20% would have to go back to the assembly. So that's just a, an additional cleanup from the previous changes. And then uh, jump down the lines 45 through 48. Um, that's just additional clarifications that the associated endorsements um, need to be added and, and obtained from the state of Alaska as well as uh, test the license. Then on page 8, lines 2 through 4, that's where I'll um, make that change to point it back to Title 10. We have due process. Line six just adds a clarification for hand endorsements. And then uh, lines 12 and 13 just specifies that associated endorsements shall be decided upon as part of the conditional use application. Do we still use that term? Conditional use application. Well, in the downtown, it's, it's the it runs code. by the Thank conditional you. use standards. So that's why it's a, it's a, little, uh, a little different there. And then line 28, um, we had done a, in the last AO in 2017 for some cleanups of the marijuana regs, there was an amendment that was passed to strike the language, it's, arra it's arrangement of rooms from the definition of the floor plan. And I believe it was just an error that we incorporated in the new code, but we also didn't incorporate it in the old code. So this just goes back and cleans that up. Then jumping to page nine, Line nine, it's just uh, again goes back to the previous AO we had to clean up some of the marijuana regulations and it just specifies the variance standards for marijuana variance uh, within the downtown area. The one approval criteria that the variance is the minimum variance necessary to allow reasonable use of the property for commercial marijuana. And the reason we had done that uh, originally was because this approval criteria could essentially never be met if somebody came in for a marijuana variance because you could say, well, that property could be used for X number of other reasons. So why should we give you a variance for the marijuana facility? This just points it specific to marijuana. And then uh, lines 17 through 20, old code is worded a little differently. So this is a use specific standard for marijuana consumption. And it just points to the definition of what a marijuana consumption area is and that all outdoor Marijuana consumption area shall be screened for viewing all sides of the screen fence or wall. All right. Uh, any comments on that? Okay, good. So, wrapping up, uh, title, I guess we'll get two more versions. Title 10, you're going to combine these and the other ones. You got guidance you need on that. Correct. Title 21, a few changes have these back one week from today. We can do it. So we have just a time so we might want to bump that to 11 o'clock. Okay. 9 to 11 just to make sure we can get it. Okay. Does that work? Anything else? Public oh what, what was our decision for CG? What was our decision on the way to go for the Title 21 issue? Um, to the chair, so we, we're going to extract the non-on-site uh, consumption based provisions 
uh, deal with those separately at a later date. So what you will get back will be just the title employment provision specific to on-site. And again, I think we'll, we'll reiterate our, our belief that this should be something that moves at the same time and does not need to go back to planning and planning review. Oh, you're going to pull everything not related to on-site. It's not, not just on the title of Yes. You're going to pull it all. Everything. So the sign and the yes. um, arrangement. Even the, the, even the corrections yeah. to the uh, discretion on um, on minor okay. bonds. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, it doesn't mean that those changes slow down, actually, when we have two parallel ordinances. Exactly. We'll pull it out separately. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? So, uh, um, audience participation, if we're really brief. Uh, Emily Neenan, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Just a process question. Um, I know that there was a desire to bring forward some information on health and safety issues at this meeting, and I fully appreciate that you guys had a lot of technical things to work through today. So I was just wondering um, what the further process is today. Well, I guess content issues. So next week we have a license to look at. It takes about half an hour. We're going to look at a. Um, Alaska Alfred is there, and then we'll look at these two and we have time. But then I think once we get that, it may move forward to the regular assembly process in the public hearing. Uh, we can certainly email us certain those issues. So um, I think before the meeting, uh, I mean, Tim, how, how, how many days before that meeting? <coughs> before next week? Before our <coughs> when will you have your work done? So the public can see it. Because we posted this stuff last night. We'll, we'll provide it. We'll provide it at the meeting next week as quickly as possible. Hopefully, we can have it posted on the website agenda the day before, at the very least. Okay. So you know, we've been working on a draft. I think that sometime after, sometime in the coming weeks, an actual version will be introduced at the assembly. And that'll kick off a whole nother process that will have not only the public hearing, but I would assume that whoever the chair is will probably want to do at least a work session on this as yeah, well. Yeah, this is sure. a hot yeah. issue. So um, this is like the preliminary to make sure what goes out to the public is a sort of legally functioning document. But then the broader question about whether this happens at all, I think, will be kicked off right. once it's introduced. Right. Yeah. And the, the fastest this would be before the body is if. Uh, we complete our revisions of both Title 21 and Title 10. The, this committee meets on Thursday of next week, signs off on them. We could theoretically get that turned around and dropped into PACE right after this meeting so that it shows up on the regular agenda for the 23rd. Um, third. Third. For introduction. But more, for, for, introduction. for introduction, more likely it will be the first meeting in May. Right. And, 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 um, when he says signs off, this committee doesn't make decisions for the assembly. This has to go to the assembly for a vote. So we're just working out these details. Then it goes forward to the assembly. So, just so, people know. Um, so hopefully that works. You will look on Thursday, see what's posted, and maybe be able to come. Um, you know, so we'll at this point, possibly try to come. That work? Anything else? It seems to me like a Zanu and ILS. If we don't allow some sort of on-site smoking or vaporization of town, that's good to don't have any protection to the people. I need to avoid that This is a form of technical Yeah, Yeah, okay. Anyone else? Okay, so that's it. We are adjourned. Thank you.